Today I'm here to talk uh, about uh, the New Testament United Takeover Part 2. And why Part 2? Because I have, I've already spoke before about the Takeover and um, I'll, I'll be doing it again. So uh, I, know, I know that everybody has been seeing and receiving the news, mostly in New Testament United France. You can see the news if you have the Newcastle United uh, app, or uh, if you have the, if you at least have this app, the, the Newcastle United FC dot football. You can see the news, everything there is about the club, as I I usually do. So if uh, I'm talking about this app, most of you know knows what I'm talking about. So. The, this is not about the app or anything else. It's the reason that I'm doing a part two of on the takeover is to talk about uh, uh for the the recent uh, the recent uh, situations, the, re the recent things that is happening in about the club, and one of the things uh, I've been seeing the, the news here in the app as I've been seeing recently like many of you I would like to see the, cl the club be taken for by another uh, people that can manage and uh, help the club reach further this is everyone's goal and I I'm sure that uh, you want that I want that everyone wants that for the sake of our club but I think there is something that is very important to talk about here is that we cannot get ahead of ourselves. And the first uh, thing that I, I would like to, to, to talk about, and I, uh, today I was seeing uh, the news in, in, the, in the app, and uh, I, I was seeing something that uh, John Barnes, uh, John Barnes, uh, talked uh, before the, the veteran John Barnes is that uh, uh, it, it's important for us to start to low uh, a little bit our expectations because and he's right when he says it because we have to see that when the club is taken by this consortium uh, we cannot expect Messi or Ronaldo or Mbappe or anyone like that. We can expect to to find a good manager. We can expect the the new the new owners to work forwards, uh, making a, a good team, a strong team. And that's what, and that's the realistic situation here. That's what we can expect. We, I, I don't think that we are in a position that we can expect big names. And and that's and that's for a very simple reason. Look, guys and girls, of course. Uh, look, we are fighting for nothing. We are in a situation right now that we are fighting for nothing. We can seek for. Players, good players that are, for instance, that are launching themselves in their careers, or for players that are that are rising players that are starting to being shown in the in the football world, and uh, mostly that's what we can expect for. So we can expect that we can get players that want to jump on their careers and uh, they might see for instance for instance the Newcastle as a good door to to enter towards the, the, the Premier League so that's what we can expect uh, right now look it, it's unrealistic to think about Cristiano Ronaldo or Leo Messi or players like Mbappe and, and, and that's not because of, of the money situation because yes we know that this consortium uh, from led by the Saudi Arabian prince they have the money I know that 
we all know that they they have the money they can they can buy all the players they want they can do everything they want of course but we cannot forget that we are not fighting for anything right now we are not fighting for champions league we are not fighting for the league oh i know that we had a phase during the season that we almost almost got into a position that we could fight at least for European competitions and we were that close so if we held uh, our situation that time in the way that we could reach right now before the, the Premier League restarts if we could reach, reach a situation that we could um, start to fight for for something else yeah that that would be incredible that would be magnific and uh, probably even we were fighting for Europa League for instance and we we can still reach Europa League because we're still in the cup in the FA then we might start to think about the, the big names some big names names that even we are we play in Europa League. They might want to come because there is a new team uh, with a new system, everything done differently, and w which we can fight for something else. We can reach uh, the. I, I'm not saying we will reach the the Premier League title in the first year, but at least top four first year. And that, the year after might come closer and who knows in three years became champions that would be magnific that would be magnificent that would be fantastic but of course there's always a we are in a situation that we are like if we win the FA if we win now I'm not saying that we we are not able to win the FA if we can, but uh, if we can when we restart the season if we can start to play a little bit better as the last match start to show we start to play a little bit better or, and of course little by little if we can if we have so, at least most of the players recovered from injuries then we might uh, start thinking something else we might start thinking in the in the, who knows winning the winning the, the cup and might think in some bigger names not the biggest names because look they don't want the money look Ronaldo doesn't need the Newcastle money because he's in Juventus and maybe even if you want to return to England look uh, don't take me wrong but I, I'm not I'm not thinking choosing Newcastle you, you, you would probably return to Manchester so because it, it it's his home you no know? so and and Messi I'm not seeing Messi leaving Barcelona and Mbappe Mbappe is in in PSG and I, I look he earns a tons of millions basically uh, so uh, I'm not seeing that I I'm, I'm not seeing that look I think that we start we need to start to be realistic about uh, about player we can we can get we have to start being realistic so we might uh, we can think further on on the, on this season and of course mostly uh, thinking about next season and I think we need to be realistic but first we need to see the takeover done also I know I'll speak here again. I saw. Uh, no, I don't have here. I, I, I don't have here the news. Uh, I, I, I would talk, I would say who who said this, but uh, unfortunately, I, I, I'm just trying to check in the app if I have here the news, but I don't think I have. So yeah, I don't. I don't. I'm not finding it because I saw. A few days ago, 
um, a news from a journalist, I think a Spanish, and I don't know, a Spanish journalist, that were talking, uh, that were talking about um, the new the new managers, the situation of, of the new managers, and um, of course that we are we are the media is speculating about some manners or the return of Rafael Benitez, Maximilian Allegri, po Pochettino, even Lucien Favre, why not? And uh, but with the biggest name being uh, Pochettino um, uh, even, pro, okay, so I was seeing just in so Pochettino is being the most uh, talked but there was, there was during that interview interview, he spoke about a, a name that I, I spoke here in the first vlog a few a few weeks ago, so he spoke about uh, the Leverkusen coach. So uh, his how his name? Uh, I said uh, Nagelsmann, Julian Nagelsmann. Nagelsmann. Oh, tough to say. And he spoke about Julian Nagelsmann, and um, as he is a, a, a new manager, a, a new, not new but a young manager, he might bring fresh ideas and uh, a fresh way to be so I truly believe that at this moment and uh, even even I understand that for example, Julian Nagelsmann might feel good at Leverkusen and, and happy because he's in a great team in Germany and he is in his home country I truly think that if we make a good proposal to this kid, to this manager. Uh, he will, he will go to to England. No doubt about it. He will go to England. He will move to Newcastle, and he will make. A, he will help make a great project and take our club far, very far, far away. So he will take our club to reach new heights and. To find new ground, so I, I truly believe that for me, I okay, I, I understand these names and Benitez, even Pochettino. But look, Pochettino is a good manager, but there is some for me in Pochettino. There is always something missing. There is all always the what if, what if he, he do this, what if he does he does that, what if he. he is able to this or to that or or whatever. So, but the situation here that I see about Pochettino is that is always is like I said is always in the what if, and is not uh, really uh, really doing it, really reaching it, and we saw it on Tottenham. So, and Tottenham ha has. That great squad and uh, great players that reached uh, Champions League uh, final last year. Of course, now there is no no more er Ericsson, but there is that 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 they still have a great team. But truth be told, he could never manage the team uh, uh, any longer and anymore. So for some and for some reason he had to to leave the the club. So I uh, look I, I I I don't see I don't see it I don't see it on 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 Pochettino. Uh, he's a good manager. He can make a, a, a good team, but I don't see that he's the the, the great the greatest option uh, right now for for our, our club. No, I, I don't see it. I'm must I don't see it. And uh, so, uh, once again, I say, uh, guys, Julian Nagelsmann is a young manager, fresh ideas. He's ready to, to conquer the, the world of football. 
he's ready to make that great jump and uh, help the club reach for, forward and uh, reach new heights and, and to win, to conquer something. So I think that he's the best option. And But let's see when the consortium gets the club, when uh, the takeover is, is over, then we'll see how things will 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 end and how things will come will, will be organized and will come up the other thing that i'm going to talk here in the, in the most short short notice is about these new documents that the that has been asked to supposedly this new document that has been asked for for that consortium and for 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 the, the enterprise, let's say managed by manage managed by by the Saudi, by the Saudi um, Saudi the Saudi prince, and it seems like Premier League. I, I don't understand. That. Look, even though after the, the takeover is done. We have to respect the financial fair play. So, or we could end like Manchester City is is ending, being being banned for some some years of no European competition because of not respecting the financial fair play. But what really, and even though the, the the crown prince of Saudi Arabia brings all that, that though all those millions to the club, uh, that has to be respected. So that's why we have to break things little by little by little. So we cannot just get it and make a, and skyrocket, skyrocket to the top and uh, not matter about anything else. So we have to respect that. But what really uh, what really makes me unhappy what really pisses me off is that i feel that the takeover could be already done and now there is this this story that the premier league as as asked to the consortium for new documents for uh, like they call it like emergency documents to prove basically that that uh, this the, that the, the, the prince or the, the government of Saudi Arabia of Saudi Arabia uh, is not facilitating TV piracy so let's 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 see this in a, in different perspectives. So the situation here basically is that Saudi Arabia is allowing uh, that uh, piracy the TVs, uh, piracy that pirate TVs are let's say something like that that they are allowing to do some channels to, to to show illegal matches so without paying the fees without respecting the rules from of broadcasting without any of that and they claim that uh, the Saudis are are allowing it even they already denied by the, the link to this biot key biot key Piracy, the bad price of Bioki, that they like many other stream channels around uh, the world and stream uh, apps that there is around the world do it. The do uh, what regarding uh, to to show matches. Uh, to show matches and programs and everything without the necessary permission. 
What really makes me a little bit is that all these things, as we know that the the enterprise, the man that is taking lead to our club is a man with big money, with a lot of money. It seems that primarily it's trying in everything they can to stop this takeover. And why and why I say that? Sorry, because it seems to me the reason they are doing it is because they know that in a short time Newcastle can rise can rise up very 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 fastly and uh, without asking permission to anyone to rise up in in the in the English football and European football in in as if I say I say in two three years we are, we might be seeing Newcastle winning everything conquering every everything and that's what we as fans and supporters that's what we want of course that we cannot be blind to the point of not seeing how situation are are being de de dealt with uh, in. but uh, it really uh, it really worries me that the Premier League uh, always finds something to to present and always tries to find a way to this negotiation to not not reach further and that's 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 sad to see because look uh newcastle i know that newcastle is not just a club we we the fans we feel the club we cheer for the club we suffer for the club we love the club but we know that this is also also an enterprise, a football enterprise. So of course we want every deal to be as clean as possible. And since the beginning we've been seeing this deal to be done in the most cleanest way possible. But it seems that Premier League has some on some big clubs in England some big clubs and you probably probably already know who am I talking about don't want this to, to happen because they know that Newcastle even with the financial fair play even with all that the club will skyrocket very fast and in a way that will put uh, many clubs on the prem put will put many things and I'm not saying in jeopardy, but they will might they will probably not reach near us anytime soon in the next few years. And that's what I see that is is it is worrying the the Premier League is like with this um, consortium with the money that Newcastle is about to receive, and the Premier League might not be as competitive as it's been in these last 10-15 years oh. look and I understand that I truly understand that I just don't understand the way the ways and so not just the way the ways that the Premier League and the legal authorities in in, in UK Sorry, are dealing with this and the ways that and things that they are doing in the way in the, to avoid this negotiation to go to go further because they and once again I repeat it seems for me it seems that they are afraid that our club skyrocket and uh, it, it won't be cough <laughs> anytime soon so I I just hope that this pirate this build build K build K is something like that that the prime and some authorities even I say the the international amnesty or the amnesty international I think is amnesty 
international that is said, let me just confirm, they also, they also, uh, they also claim something about that, I think it's the Amnesty International, they claim uh, some things like, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not finding it now, I oh, know I see the I see the a little while ago that the international Amnesty or Amnesty International it doesn't matter they also claim about not just human rights but about this situation as well so look come on I understand that and look the laws uh, is is there to be respected but look it's not just because. Uh, it's, it's not just because the laws are not being uh, followed as it must be. It's for, first and foremost, it's important that we can prove all that and we can find solutions. Because, and once again, it's not when the business, it's not when the deal is already, is almost done. And it's black and is black and white. It's on paper. Is everything done? It's ready to go. And they start to find new things. They start to find new ideas because they know once again it's because of the money. Because I've seen this a lot of times in many situations. When we are talking about small money, I don't see many people or many enterprises worried about human rights, about TV rights, about all that, you know, about piracy, about nothing. But when we see big money going on, and that's what, and that's the case here, there's always someone that has something to say. And there's always someone that doesn't like, and I believe many clubs in the Premier League is not, are not liking this situation, but they always find a way to take the situation uh, upside down and trying to smash it uh, so these kind of uh, agreements this uh, just not doesn't happen won't, won't happen so look I understand that and I understand that most of the Premier League is worried about the level of competition that the league might lose with time but look once again, business is business, and we as fans, we also want our club to reach further and to become become more competitive. So I just hope that this, in the next few days, it's already been chopped and linked that we might see the league start in the end of May, beginning of June, so that would be fantastic. And uh, I just hope that we just can have this word out to the end of May and we can see our club reach further and we can start in the next season expecting that this season we can at least finish strong with Bruce at, at, at the wheel and uh, with the team we, we have because we I still say we have a good team I, f I truly feel that we have a good team right now we just don't have the right person to take our team far and and further that's what i think but i just hope that we can do everything right at least till the end of this season and then the last next season can be a good season and can take us far away can take us further and, and who knows start to win something start doing something relevant and make ourselves proud as always, I'm, I'm a proud fan of Newcastle, I'm a proud supporter of Newcastle, I will, I will always be, but of course when we have titles in the run and we have titles, uh, the Cups conquered, look, it, it, it's just so much better, so that would be fantastic. Uh, today I'm a little bit, my, my season is a little bit uh, clocked, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it's worth it. So let's see what, uh, what's going to happen in the next times and in the, in the rest of the month. And I 
and I'll finish my vlog for today. It's already been 30 minutes in, in the making. So I think that I said most of the things I want to say today about uh, about this takeover once again, part two. Uh, you have the links below to to our to our channel, everything there, and um, and where you can follow and support and subscribe uh, to our channel right now. And uh, and I'll be here soon uh, to talk about uh, football and to, to talk about many other things. Uh, one last thing, well, last thing, I, 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 I think this is important, I was for almost forgot just seeing here in the paper that I, that I wrote, uh, one thing that is important to, to, to talk about. Last week, me and my collaborator, Andrea Perdigan, we spoke about Anzi Mahashkala, so this Russian club that um, in 2011, between 2011 and 2013, 2013, they were supposed to be a big club in Russia. So they had this big money guy that invested a lot in the club, but didn't have a strategy. So the club last two years, spent a lot of money, didn't done enough in the club, and the club just got bad gated. And, with, and now he's in the third tire of Russian football. There's one thing that I want to say here. Look, if you if you want and if you if you can if you want you can go and see the last show and the last podcast and you will see what I'm talking about. But if you search you can search on Google and you'll find something about them in Mahashkal. What I want to say is, is is that we cannot reach we cannot do things like some of us fans and supporters are thinking like it's going to be money or we'll just invest and that's it. We have to invest, we have to invest in new facilities, we have to invest of course in, in staff, we have to invest of, also in players, we have to invest in our youth teams that they will bring most of, of the future for the club in the next years and that's very important to invest. And we have to think about it first. We need to have a solid base so we can take the club further, not in the next two or three years, but in the next ten years, we can still be in a competitive club and reach further. We cannot do as NZ done. So, because we will reach a point that uh, we were supposed to go further, and we had the players, we have, we have everything, and we done nothing, we done zero. We cannot reach that point. So once again, uh, don't be overwhelmed with everything that's going on. Let's let's just uh, wait to for the club to to be worked out and uh, for everything to be done and to to create solid grounds and to create the necessary routes so in in a way that our club can reach further because if it's not that way believe me we'll reach the point that we'll be another Andy Mahashkala we'll be another Andy and we'll be just like like them probably in second third fourth tire of uh, of uh, of uh, of the English football we cannot allow ourselves that so we have to do things uh, thoughtfully and do things uh, with uh, with uh, with everything well planned, so we can have solid ground and good roots for the future. And that's if you didn't see, you can check out the last podcast. You can you you you'll find it here in the page. So uh, and. If you, do, if you don't see the podcast, you can search on Google about Anzi, about that, uh, about that story. Most of you probably remember that run of Anzi Maharshkala. And I think that is important uh, to, to look to these examples and do something meaningful and something that we can be proud of in the years to come. Okay, so 
uh, go check her out and uh, of course put your comments here and give your ideas and uh, don't forget to subscribe and follow and support us you know in everything we, in our in all um, in all our, all our so social media in all our social media I'm having difficulties to say uh, uh, all our social media so just subscribe us uh, in the links in the bottom and I'll see you here on next week for another edition of Talking Football Soccer so see you then